What's up, Liron here. I got a new haircut, I got a new monitor for the studio, and today we're gonna talk about focusing on the large shapes when painting. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. One of the most important aspects of painting and, and being able to put to paper what you see in front of you is reading the large shapes. And this is what I want us to focus on today. Now, if you recall, uh, back in the day, I did a video titled, I believe, the best exercise for landscape painting in which I did thumbnails. Okay, so the thumbnail exercise. Today, I'm going to do a kind of revisited version of that. This time, however, we're going to focus even more on composition and on the large shapes and how to portray them. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I've got uh, the paper here ready uh, and we're going to choose. I chose four scenes for you that are all very interesting, in my opinion, and very varied as well. So we're going to have some still life, some views, some cars, some all sorts of things. Okay, so with that being said, let's get started. I'm going to show you all of the reference photos uh, as well as the, the painting area and we'll get started. So here is my setup. I just took basically an eighth of, or a sixteenth of a sheet. I never uh, remember the exact dimensions. Uh, and I divided it into four areas, okay? All of these are gonna be landscape oriented, but you can definitely do that portrait oriented if you just turn it around, or you can mix and match and do together. Now, these kinds of exercises, I usually use this part of the, uh, of the paper, the part with the watermark. So this is a good chance to save up on your good stuff and use uh, the, the paper you wouldn't necessarily want to use for finished uh, painting even though I did some finished paintings and sold them with that thing here. So in any case the reason why this exercise is so useful is that it allows you to gain a lot of experience in building the scene, working on composition and all sorts of interesting things uh, by but doing it very quickly and you can work on all four thumbnails sim simultaneously plus uh, if you really like one of them, you can later on develop it into a fuller painting and now you know you studied it really well. So let's start going over the references. I'm going to show them hopefully here. Uh, the first one is uh, the one I did uh, for the uh, the large, the last large painting, I did a really large one. Uh, and uh, with this, I'm very familiar with. There's We have this large shadow shape on the left. Uh, we have this uh, building kind of in the middle. Uh, and then we have uh, all sorts of highlights in between. So that's a really good scene. Uh, the next one is going to be still life with a dark background. These are some of my favorites. Um, and with that, we're going to focus on the process and connecting as many shapes as possible. Um, the next one is a parking lot that's backlit. Uh, so I really like these kinds of backlit scenes. It'll be a good opportunity in simplifying what we see. And finally, uh, we have uh, a bit more of a complex scene that may require uh, some editing. So bear with me and we're going to get through this and hopefully you will learn a lot about how to build and compose your paintings. So let's get started with uh, drawing, the drawing process. I'm going to start with uh, the very first scene. So I zoomed in so you can see only what's necessary. I'm going to put the reference here, obviously. Uh, and we're just going to get started. I'm not too worried about measuring very carefully the proportions. What we want to focus on is the general gist of the scene. So first, the, the horizon line, that'll be the easiest shape to put in. And it's about a third. So that's one, two, three. That's about a third is here. And I'm just going to place it very lightly. The reason for that is that there's going to be something um, above it, a lot of things actually above it that I want to put it. So the first thing is this building on the left and I'm just going to place that in and it's really off to the side of the scene and it will create this interesting L shape, okay? And remember, we're going to also um, uh, paint this. So I'm just being as loose and free as I can. We have that rounded shape here. Uh, then it goes down like that and it connects to this shadow that casts on the ground. And I actually have a fly here, I'm going to get rid of it and continue. Um, so it connects to this cast shadow on the floor. And by the way, sorry if there's a bit of a background noise. There's a lot of construction works being done on our street right now. Uh, so that's the, the first kind of shape. And that's all we really need uh, when you think about it. There is some uh, interest here, but that's not that significant. So that's the shadow. It connects to a bunch of other shadows here that if you notice reach all the way to the uh, imaginary horizon line. Again, you can't really see it. So I'm just putting it as lumps and they cast some shadows that create a lot of interest. So I will indicate that 
And this is pretty much it for this shape. Uh, and now we have the buildings. So the main one is somewhere around here, halfway through from the horizon line to the, to the top of the uh, scene. So that's one thing. Then it goes like that, it kind of curves and goes into the distance and meets it somewhere around here. So that's another shape like this with that second building around here. And then we have a lower hanging building. And this is mainly all of the main shapes. We have some shadows under the building, obviously, that I want to get in, like so. Very abstractly, very loosely. We don't need much more than that. And finally, we have a couple of details like this um, lighting, light pole or some signs, you know, stuff like that. But these are the main major shapes. Uh, this one's going to be much darker. And notice how quick this process is. This one's going to be darker. This area is going to be darker. So notice how we basically have a couple of areas of very strong uh, light. So it's the, the buildings and this, well, probably the sky area. And then this uh, light area on the road. And then we have one major shadow, second major shadow, and they kind of connect. Okay, so that's the first thing, that scene. That's all we need. Let's move on now uh, to the next one. So this is number one. Now we're going to move to number two. So this scene is a little different, a lot different actually. It's a still life. Uh, and with that, I'm going to look at the main shape, which is the book on or the cloth, uh, rather, on top of which the fruit uh, stand on. Okay, so on the right, it ends somewhere around here in the lower section. On the left, it's somewhere around the middle. And this is what's going to create a bit of the balance in the scene. So it's not just a straight line dead in the center, boring. So we have that kind of line. Now we have uh, another dark area really close to the bottom here that I think I'm going to leave the same for now, even though I could easily have changed it. Uh, and then we have this kind of fold in the cloth. Just I'm going to use it as a marker for placement. Now this um, orange thing, I don't know what you call that exactly. We call it uh, like Clementina, so I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to put it here in Hebrew, that, that is. I'm going to put that on this side. And I know that it ends somewhere around this line. And then we have the pair here, kind of, again, really loose and rough. I'm not too worried about being uh, really accurate here with the stem. This is important. It's going to be highlight and a leaf like that. And finally, we have the apple. These two are connected. Uh, the apple isn't really connected. So I'm just going to place that here. And the goal again is to focus on the large shape. So we're not going to worry too much. I'm going to change the direction of the stem because they both face the same way. Um, again, to focus on the large shapes, kind of, um, connecting a lot of shapes. So you can see this shadow is in fact connected here. Now it's important to follow the direction of the cloth when putting in the shadow and then it casts one here, goes over here. And this is pretty much it. I'm just going to erase some of these lines and make sure that I have an indication for the shadows that are going to be quite important. This is actually a shadow cast by this apple probably. And this goes kind of like this. There's a strong reflection. It's not a, re a real apple, obviously. And this is it for this one. Let's move on to uh, the third one here. So this is uh, the third scene. And um, at face value, it may seem a little complex. Uh, but that's the entire goal of this exercise, to focus on just the large shapes. So we have the horizon line, it's somewhere around the third. Now I'm going to lift it up just a bit to give me more room to work on the cars. Otherwise, I don't think I'll be able to. So that's kind of like that. It's still around the lower third. Now we have some trees coming on from the left. That's a rather uh, large shape. So I'm going to put it in a couple of trees here in the distance. I really like the composition that turned out completely by mistake, by the way. And then we have this light pole like this. We have this uh, not awning, but kind of a stretched fabric, you know, to create some shadow near this small park area. And here we have the cards. Now the cards, I'm just going to put in some perspective lines. Okay, so it does help to know some perspective, uh, but I'm really eyeballing it. So it's not as accurate. And this, this is where the cars end. And then I'm just going to start painting them and we'll see what happens, sketching them rather. Now the thing is, again, you want to focus on the large shapes. So uh, I would rather paint the, the highlight. So we have this highlight on top of this car. And we have another highlight on top of this car that's a little more to the left. Another small highlight here. 
And that way you just focus on the, we have another rather large one here and I'm not even worried about scramming everything into the uh, area, so to speak. I'm just worried about the main shape. So we have this card's a little too short maybe and it casts a shadow over here. This car kind of casts a shadow over here, over here, we have another one. And then you get to see how just the major shapes. Now this thing casts also a shadow, so I'm gonna put that in. And it has to be, uh, to adhere to the same direction of the car, so I'm gonna kind of place it here, which may hurt my composition, but that's fine. Um, I may put, another one right around here just to get the message across like so and this is all we need really I know it's a big mess but these are the main shapes the trees trees here highlights on top of cars that I need to avoid in my washes like so maybe some tail lights that I'll avoid cars uh, rooftops shadows shadow here shadow here going a little stronger on this one so that you can actually see uh, the details but this is all we really need and last scene so as I mentioned this one is uh, a little more complex we'll need to do some editing work uh, so the horizon line is once again about a third so somewhere around here and then we have a couple of major shapes we want to watch out for so let's make the horizon line even a little higher because I think we'll need that space so one major shape we have is uh, this tree coming onto the from the left, but it doesn't finish uh, at the horizon line. It actually goes a little lower here and then casts this huge shadow in the foreground. And again, sorry if there's noise from the outside, it's terrible, there's just so much construction work right now. And then it casts this big shadow here. Okay, so that's the tree and all of this area is really in the shadow. Then uh, we have this bunch of trees coming up like this and then the buildings then we have here on the left another tree some uh, tree trunks here um, then we have the the perspective going uh, in that direction and then there's some cars I'm gonna put just one uh, and then the rest will be clear by observing that one okay so here's one and again notice how I'm, I'm going for a very inaccurate look okay I'm not trying too hard, I'm just placing in the elements. It's not even drawing the actual details, but rather drawing the, the overall vibe and scene and the, and, the, and the mood of the scene, rather. Okay, now here we have this uh, left uh, part of the, what do you would call it, the sidewalk, and it has some shadow in it. And if you can't understand anything of what I did, don't worry, I'm going to clarify it uh, with the later washes. So now what we're going to do is just start painting and we're gonna start with the very first scene let me rearrange some stuff and we'll get started so first scene here we go and this is a good opportunity to just use the leftovers on your palette and not worry too much about that uh, now I will need to establish some lights and some darks um, but there isn't too much uh, work here really so the first wash here's how I treat it the sky is gonna be uh, cooler blue uh, but the highlights, I want them to be yellow. Now this building also is, the wall has an undertone, uh, a yellow undertone. So what I will end up doing is covering this with blue and all the rest with yellow. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna do it real fast. I'm gonna start with the yellows actually. I'm gonna use some very uh, pure uh, nickel azo yellow here stretch it all over the, the buildings and everything here. And for some variation's sake, I can add a bit of uh, Perlin Red or something like so. I'm just gonna place it over everything, okay? Later on, when we put in some more shadows, it'll bring out some other details and some other important areas. But this is really all I need for now. So this is for the buildings. And now for the sky, I'm gonna use Thalo Blue. Uh, I believe for the original piece I used uh, French Ultramarine, but doesn't really matter. A bit purer, like so. And it actually has to be quite dark because the sky and the scene is quite dark. Um, so I will add some more paint to the mix. And this is basically 
everything you need in the first wash, okay? Now again, the sky may seem a little dark, but don't worry about that. You have to remember it's so wet right now that it's gonna dry really, uh, really uh, light, okay? Uh, so this is pretty much it for this one. Let's move on to the next and we're gonna do them again, one by one. Next scene is this still life. I think I will preserve its um, monochromatic properties. I'll just use the uh, nickel azo yellow and carbazole violet and together these create beautiful grays. Uh, so I'm going to start with the, the, the first layer here essentially is everything that's, that's going to be mid value. So I'm going to go over all of these and again focusing on just the large shapes, okay? That's all I really care about. There's uh, of course a couple of small highlights, I will uh, leave them. They, are, they do play some kind of role like this highlight, uh, but not too much really. And then I'm going to fill that area up. And again, this is the equivalent of doing this uh, thumbnail exercise on a still life, okay? So I hope that makes sense. And then we get this uh, shadow on the pier here. And it kind of connects to some parts of the stem. There's this curve here. And I'm going to connect it all and I'm, I'll just yellow it up for some interest's sake. Avoid the small highlight here. Connect all of the shadows like so, you see? Just focusing on the major shapes that we drew earlier. And then we have this kind of shadow moving in. So I'm gonna add that. And then near the bottom it gets a little darker. I'm gonna use maybe uh, a little bit of both, really. Let's, let's see what we get. Just a bit of both with an interesting variation. Here it gets really dark, so like this and this maybe just this shadow on the leaf here this is pretty much it now at this stage you could go back and do some wet wet and wet you could add some more details if you really wish to but we'll get most of these things on the next watch so I'm not too worried about them uh, so we can let that one go for now and move on to the next one now I moved everything around a bit because I didn't want to put my palette on the wet paint uh, but with this scene that may initially seem complex, it's actually rather simple. What I'm going to do for the first wash is just a gradual change from blue to uh, yellow. Now you may wonder why did I decide to do that? If you look at the reference, there is a gradual change from kind of a cooler sky um, color to a bit of a warmer uh, yellow. And it's very gradual. But the one thing I do need to pay attention to, first off, the sky is really light. I'm gonna charge that with a little more water. This wash needs to be extra light, like this. And now, what's important is really, first off, I'm gonna do the change gradually, and I don't want it to blue up too much, so I may use a bit of, uh, because I accidentally kind of mixed them, but I will do this. I'm, I will use a mix of uh, raw sienna and nickel as a yellow. Now, the one thing you have to remember, we talked about this earlier, is to preserve your highlights, okay? That's the, the, the number one thing to remember. So the highlights here, um, and hopefully you can see most of the mixing, uh, the highlight here is around the rooftops of the cars, okay? Um, and I know that the sky is actually lighter than some of these areas, but for me at least that's what I wanna express because these are the objects that are closer to us, okay? Uh, so I hope that makes sense. This is where I take some artistic license. Uh, so all sorts of random kind of highlights to um, create this interest. Now I'm going around these highlights that I told you about. And I will do everything here uh, yellow. Now the reason why I don't do the shadows already blue or something like that is that the ground under them has a bit of a yellow color once again. So I'm going to treat that... Uh, yellow color as it is under the shadows and then I'm gonna glaze later on with a darker um, darker layer on the shadows and that'll make more sense okay so we're pretty much done with this one let's move on to uh, the last scene now this one may seem the most confusing or overwhelming but again you have to just focus on the large shape so what do we have here we have the sky we have some trees to the side and buildings and all sorts of things and then we have this large highlight of the street and then this shadow. And by the way, there is a car that I didn't put in at the middle of the road that I'll just put in really lightly, as you can see here, without almost giving it uh, any 
attention to detail or anything like that. Just I want it just for the shadow. So uh, all we have here really is again blue for the sky. Let's use French ultramarine to break off the uh, phalo-ness of this thing. And for the sky, I'm gonna use that. But for the trees and the buildings and everything, there is this sort of warmer tint, warmer feeling, warmer undertone that I do want to present here. So I will use uh, some warmer colors for these, like this, and I will alternate between Nickel Azo, some raw sienna that I like, and I will avoid some of the highlights, okay? So the highlights are mostly on tops, the tops of the cars, um, and then perhaps on the left side of this car, connected to this, because we don't have too much. It may seem overwhelming, it may seem like a lot, but really, once you put in the shadow, it will all make much more sense. There isn't an awful lot here. So again, I'm gonna use a lot of yellow for this part. I'm gonna use a bit of uh, red here near the bottom. Can you see how quickly I do this without really worrying too much? And that's the whole power of this exercise. And you may find out that you got lucky and something really worked out um, in a favorable way where you didn't plan on. Now I killed off some of the red accidentally, so I'm gonna bring it back. Like so, uh, and this is it. Now we're gonna let all of these four uh, dry. Let me show you what I've got so far. So again, we're gonna let all of these dry and then come back with the second wash and see if we can produce some kind of a sense of uh, three dimensionality or, or depth or something. Most of it is gonna be created by the second layer, okay? Because you don't need much more than two, especially with these simple things. Uh, but we may need a third one just for ultra darks, okay? So let's let it dry and come back. Okay, so the paint is dry now, and <clears throat> what we have to remember at this stage, sorry, uh, is that it's we have to focus on the large shapes. So what I'm gonna do is first actually start with this large shadow shape here, and then we'll uh, kind of connect it to here somehow. So uh, I'm gonna really blue this one up, because I wanna bring it closer to me. Um, and then I'm gonna neutralize it a bit, so uh, a bit of uh, all, primaries really, so a bit of thalo blue, some of this red and some nickel azo yellow. Uh, and then when I have a mix I like, and I'll have to uh, really produce more than I think of it, sorry I needed this red, I'll need to produce a bit of a larger quantity than I think I'll, I need, uh, just to keep it flowing. So I'm gonna just start, um, and without worrying too much, I'm just gonna cover this area up, there's this kind of detail here, uh, the part of the building protruding a bit, a bit of this kind of thing. Now, I'm not supposed to leave any highlights here because this is all in the shadow. You could do that. Uh, technically, you could, you can do whatever you want, really, um, if it feels like the right thing to do. And here I'm gonna stretch this kind of shadow all the way to the bottom and almost to the corner of the painting, but not. And I tend to avoid the corners because usually it's not that good of an idea to cover them. Now, maybe a hint of some people, something like that here. Now, these shadows are important and the way they're gonna cast some details is important too. So I'm just gonna place them in like so. Uh, and now I'm gonna already move on to the other shape. So this one in the background, it's a little warmer it's more affected by the light, so I'm gonna put in some, uh, a bit of a more orange mixture, really. So my uh, red and yellow. And then I'm gonna connect it to here. And I'm gonna use a very light wash. I'm, I'm still pondering whether I should leave the left sides of the walls a little light. No, it doesn't really matter. Let's just cover it all up like this like that, place this here, a bit more yellowy, then a bit more uh, red perhaps, just to create some interest. Now here's the interesting part, uh, because we're gonna have some highlights around here, so I'm just throwing them in here, but also we're gonna have a very deep and dark shadow uh, that's important to get, so I'm gonna put in some very thick mixture, and I'm gonna start putting in that uh, dark shadow, okay? 
and it's a little darker than the shadow in my foreground even uh, but that's fine I'm not gonna worry about it too much and believe it or not this is pretty much done I'm just gonna darken the right section of this building I'm not gonna worry about it too much because again we're focusing just on the main shapes but I think what I'm gonna do is well this is still just a little wet I'm gonna pour in some darker paint because I feel like this section needs to be darker this thing should be darker this should be darker like so all of this shadow in the foreground needs to be darker now then I also have a couple of figures here that I will use to connect these two shapes so a bit of a small imaginary kind of figures okay one that's perhaps a little closer and finally these shadows here in the foreground and hopefully that makes sense and you can kind of tell what you're looking at but we don't really need any more than that we're actually done with this one I'm just gonna add in this pole that I did a terrible job at but it's gonna be okay regardless and this is pretty much it we've established everything we need with this scene uh, I may add a bit of water just to lighten up this area a bit but that's it, that's it for this one. We can move on to the next scene, which is the still life. This is gonna be a real treat um, because it's a bit more straightforward, a little simpler. Uh, and this is actually why I, I do recommend a lot of people to, uh, if you wanna get started on something, get started with still life and, and watercolor especially because the drawing uh, is relatively simple. Uh, I'm not even gonna flip it even though I would have usually flipped it because it's such a small area but what I will do is switch to a bit of a larger brush with a little more presence so my silver black uh, velvet would do fine here grab a little more paint because I came back with some water into the palette like this maybe add a bit of the quinacridone burnt orange I don't know I'm just improvising here really uh, and cover all of the background up like so and because it's such a small shape uh, I can afford not to flip the paper and do some stuff that normally again would have helped me and I'm gonna leave a small highlight for uh, the stem I can kill that off later on um, I'm gonna paint around this apple here The very gentle highlight, maybe. Finish this section off. Gonna move the palette just a bit. Like so. Then this part here. Again, I'm not doing it in the most ideal way, but I'm doing it in a way that will that should work fine. Like so all the way up to the cloth that I talked about earlier, like this, maybe darken up this section a bit. And finally wrap around the apple here. And hopefully that already helps bring out the shape. Now one thing that's missing still uh, is the shadows on them because there are some very dark shadows. So the entire apple is dark. So I'm gonna just glaze on top of that a darker shadow like this and I'm gonna leave here a bit of a gap for reflected light uh, that I do see in the reference and I'm not even too worried again about edges and blending and all of that because um, it's just a quick uh, sketch and as long as you get the main impression done then I'm good so this shadow is a little lighter than the actual apple now I'm coming back with a bit of a stronger and darker shadow on the pear like this Maybe turn it a bit more yellow and connect that to this side. Paint around the orange, as you can see here. It's a little lighter. And connect this kind of shadow here. Shadow on the orange, like this. Maybe just a sliver of line here and darken this area up here in the foreground. Uh, here we have a darker area as well. The shape of the cloth uh, on which the fruit rests, like so. And then I could just blend a bit of the 
um, let's see, just a bit of the shadow on the orange or the whatever that is, uh, just because it may help to better convey its shape, but it's not really a must. Um, now, I will kill off some of that highlight here, it's a little too light, and I'm gonna do that while the, this part is still wet, I don't really care, because this is a rather uh, simplistic sketch, like so, like this, and hopefully, at least, you know what, I'm gonna pick up some of that back, it's a little too much, well, let's leave it like that, I think that works. Um, a bit of a darker shadow on the leaf here, a bit of a shadow here, some shadows here, uh, and this one is really done as well, so hopefully that makes sense, the shape and everything, and again, it doesn't have to uh, be fully accurate, uh, what matters is that the large shapes work compositionally, later on you can develop it into a more uh, well thought out and uh, an accurate um, piece of art, okay? Uh, now we're gonna move on to the cars, and really everything we're talking about here uh, relates to the idea of uh, a composition has to work in its abstract shape as well. Okay, and if, if usually if it works in its abstract shape, then um, it, meaning the general shapes are interesting, uh, then you will uh, be able to produce something uh, interesting with it uh, in a more uh, accurate and detailed manner as well. Uh, so now... I'm gonna mix some of my primaries once again because I need some dark paint here. Uh, so all three. And I'm gonna start just by putting in, and again, this is against the light, so this scene is a little different. So I'm kind of putting in those trees in the background, and I have a nice stopping point, which is the cars, okay? So when I get to the cars, I can stop my wash uh, because there's a highlight on them. For the most part and then I'm gonna connect it to all of these different trees and details here in the background like so a hint of palm trees uh, a bit of whatever that is in the background once again a lower hanging palm tree I'm getting hungry <laughs> I'm gonna have to eat soon um, this kind of thing here and then we have this uh, shade shaded area for, I don't know, kids to play or whatever. Fill that up like that. Put in the back side of that shading spot like this. Connect it to these uh, lampposts. Then we have some very gentle details around here. And already you can start getting some kind of sense for the scene. Now I'm gonna blue it up. And I don't know why, but it just feels to me like this area is a little bluer, maybe because some of the cars are white. Um, and I'm gonna start putting in the cars. Now, if this was again a very detailed piece, I would have worked much slower on the cars and put in the, the uh, tail lights, for example. I could now go back with some really pure red and put it in here, but I won't uh, want to, I wouldn't want to or need to do that in this example, okay? Just showed you what I'm not gonna do. What I'm actually gonna do is focus on the, the shapes. So we have this shape connected to this shadow, okay? And the fun thing about this exercise is that you'll do several uh, scenes and none of them will feel like they're working, but then one will, and then you can grab onto that one and, and really develop it to something that's uh, a little better. So, so there is a lot of merit to doing this kind of uh, exercise, really. This shadow goes here. This entire back part of the car is in the shadow as well, like so. Let's connect these two. Uh, what else? We have this car here. I'm gonna connect it. Now we have this shadow coming in of this kind of thing. Another longer shadow like that. This connects to the car. Some uh, more muted. Let's add some red to those here in the background. Like that, and I'm, I'm at this point. I have no idea what I'm painting, but it works. Okay, so you can tell uh, what's the shape you're looking at. Now, if you want to further darken this or add more details, just grab a bit of a um, very thick paint, like I'm doing here. I'm gonna try better, um, and then you can come back. Let's let me wet the brush a bit because I want to try and produce some wet and wet, but in an interesting way. So now you can come back with this 
thing and put it where you see that it's darker. So around here, uh, around the, the windows. And now we get to, to see some more details, you see? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and you can see it, it's a bit nuanced really, but uh, like this, I'm gonna wet the brush again, or maybe switch to uh, this smaller silver black velvet. That'll do a bit of a better job. Um, grab a bit of everything really. And I'm gonna try once again to put in some dark details. This is always a challenge, just controlling the, the paint is, it's always uh, a challenge. So here we go, some darker spots. There is a darker spot under the uh, shed here. There are some other trees in the background that I didn't get. This shadow is a little darker, this shadow is a little darker. Some shadows here. And this is pretty much it. And if you take a few steps back, you can kind of tell what you're looking at. And you can kind of tell if the composition works and if it looks good. So now we'll, we'll move on to the final scene, which is probably the only scene uh, in which we may uh, need to do it in two, st in two more steps. Okay, so for this one, I want us to focus once again on the very large shapes because otherwise we're gonna lose ourselves. So uh, I'm gonna start with that uh, tree here on the left and it, it has a very dark value, kind of like this. And then it has some of the leaves going down like that. And it connects to the tree trunk on the left that I moved a little more inside uh, because it was really on the left. Now I'm gonna blue it up because this shadow feels a little blue to me once again, but this isn't as dark as the tree. So I'm gonna add more water, like so. And this is pretty much it in terms of the shadow shape here in the foreground. There are a couple of cars in the shadow that I'll just place in very lightly. Uh, but this connects uh, with a bit of a greener maybe uh, color to the trees here in the back, okay, a little lighter. And I'm allowing myself to do this all in one go. Now I'm gonna leave some highlights here in between them, obviously, for tree trunks and, and all sorts of details like this. I'm gonna go back uh, and put in some more dark values here. This should be a little darker. We have these kind of things here. Um, let's see what else. Uh, the right section, again, I'm gonna need a bit more, maybe a bit more muted green. So I'm gonna mix whatever I have here and then connect this here, come back to the right side, paint around my highlights. And then we have this building that's a little lighter, but it does have a tree in front of it. So I'm gonna put that tree down. And then I'm gonna put in the shadows under the cars and really we're close to finishing this. Uh, so kind of like this. And it's great fun to just paint very lightly and very quickly like that. I really enjoy it. And I'm sure you will too. So a bit of a shadow here some shadows under the cars. This is a bit too dark possibly, so I'm gonna lift back some of it. Then we have this sidewalk, the tree, and it has some shadows underneath it. Then we have the main car right around here, like so. It has a bit of a darker area near the top here. And what else? We have all of these cars here in a row. Some darker spots here with some highlights for cars in the distance we see the back tire like that the front tire like that and now i'm missing a bit of red so i'm just gonna add a bit of pure red somewhere like a sign or something like that really the alvaro castanet way so this is a sign here we got all the red we need maybe a bit of shadows on the building but this is way too now i'm just enjoying myself so i'm doing some things i wouldn't normally do uh let's blend this let's blend this whole thing up like so, let's pretend the building is red, okay? Um, and what else, what else? I think this is pretty much it. Just some signs there in the, in the great distance. Uh, but again, I wasn't expecting to finish this in, in just one more wash, as, as I told you, but uh, this is really all you need to establish the scene. Uh, so this is it, now I'm gonna zoom out and rearrange some stuff and we'll look at everything. So here's what we've got at the end of this exercise. And again, the goal isn't to be perfect. It's not to produce a beautiful result or even a realistic result. Uh, it's all about 
testing out the composition in its most abstract form to realize if it's something that will work as a full-fledged detailed painting. Now the good part about this is that once in a while you'll get lucky and maybe one of all of the four you do uh, may end up looking nice. Like I really like the way this looks so I may develop this one. I also surprisingly I thought I'd love this one but I didn't. Uh, I did love this one as well and this one I already painted so I loved it uh, obviously. Uh, but these two mainly uh, look really nice uh, and I would love to develop this kind of idea. And then when you tackle the large painting, you, you realize, for example, let me show you, you realize that this tree is really important. And then you, you say, okay, so this is the kind of thing I want to show here, how this tree layers on top of everything else and leads you into the cars and looking at all the different details, okay? Now, I know you always want to see me remove the tape, so this is exactly what we're going to do now. And I'm going to start, I believe, with this one, just trying to figure out which one I should remove first. Uh, and this will give it a nice frame and again our goal here is not to create a final piece or final product it's just to experiment with different scenes compositions and, and abstract shapes uh, but it is nice seeing the, the clean borders that are created when doing this kind of exercise uh, and I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new and maybe it changed uh, the way you will approach maybe preparing for a large painting or maybe uh, just doing this exercise for fun, which I do quite often. Uh, and this is it. Now we can wrap up this video. So this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing the processes uh, and seeing me remove the tape, which I rarely do, uh, but I had to do it for you today. Um, I'm very happy with how these turned out. As, as I mentioned, I would love to develop these two uh, into full-fledged paintings. Uh, and what I love about this uh, exercises that it really helps free your mind if you're very locked onto doing specific details if you're um, very detail oriented and a lot of people mention this they're very detail oriented they lose track of the whole uh, picture and then what ends up happening is they have this congregation of details that mean nothing in cohesion together so this really forces you to go the other way around ignore the details only work on the things that merge them together, which is the shapes. Um, so I hope you learned something new from this one. It's a bit of a different spin on the previous video I did on thumbnail exercises. Um, but yeah, this is it. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And also, uh, if you still haven't subscribed, that really uh, means the world to me. And I am trying to reach as many people as possible. Also, let me know in a comment down below if there's anything you want me to expand on, any of the topics that were raised today, if you want me to focus on something else. And also, if you want me to develop one of these uh, into a larger painting, I'd be happy to do it for you and show you that transition. Okay, so thank you once again, and I will talk to you again in another vid real soon.